Avatar was so ahead of its time that production had to invent new technology just to make it happen. Here's a breathtaking look behind the scenes at the unique way the films were made. Avatar brought something entirely new to the world of film, not just in terms of what audiences saw on screen, but in the very way the movie was created. Some movies use CGI to enhance real-world sets, and some are completely animated. Avatar was something completely different. I think the thing that people need to keep very strongly in mind is that this is not an animated film. Although the Navi and the lush world of Pandora are entirely the product of computers, the actors provided real performances for their roles through motion capture. As a result of that unique process, the behind-the-scenes footage from the film is wholly different from what you'd expect. There are no prosthetics and no intricately designed sets for the most part, just the actors doing their best to perform in a digital world. The computer is creating a real-time moving skeleton of you. From that skeleton, you now can drive a computer-generated character. When Jake is exploring the jungles of Pandora, he runs into a Thanator, a ferocious alien beastie with six legs and a huge mouth filled with razor-sharp teeth. So what about this one? Run, don't run, what? Run! Definitely run! Like most of Avatar, this scene was filmed on an empty soundstage with actor Sam Worthington in a motion capture suit. To portray running away from the Thanator, he had to sprint across the soundstage through a course built to resemble the jungle obstacles in his path. With Worthington's motions on camera, what a digital animated a template for the sequence, with the Thanator and background added which eventually became the final scene. But if you think that all of Avatar's digital effects meant the actors had an easy time, you couldn't be more wrong. The way that, that Thanator flings him on the ground is, is pretty amazing. Uh, you know, the, the punishment that he took, you know, in the name of art. While Nateri is teaching Jake about the ways of the Navi, she takes him deep into the forest to show him how they interact with the environment. She takes a moment to drink water from a big purple leaf, showing him that the Navi live in harmony with nature. Drinking water from a leaf might sound like a simple process, but it's much more complicated when it's happening in the fictional world of Pandora. To make it happen, actor Zoe Saldana worked with a great contraption and drank from a plastic water bottle covered in duct tape. That guaranteed that her mouth moved naturally, so that when her facial motions were rebuilt digitally, everything would look perfect. As the head of the Avatar program, Dr. Grace Augustine has spent years studying Pandora, and she's fascinated by the culture of the Navi. She's empathetic towards their views, and dedicates much of her time to building a peaceful relationship with the Omotakaya clan, even establishing a school where the Navi and humans can interact. I put 10 years of my life into that school. They called me Sadnuk. Since she's so involved with the Avatar program, it only makes sense that she has an avatar of her own. While in her avatar, she wears more clothing than the Navi typically do, with a tank top, khaki shorts, and occasionally a tan shirt. While filming the scenes of Grace in her avatar, actress Sigourney Weaver wore a motion tracking suit, gloves, helmet, and helmet cam, with the ubiquitous motion tracking dots over her face so the computers could track her expressions. It's fascinating to see how closely the animators translated Weaver's expressions and body movements from the original footage to the final production. When humans carry out missions on Pandora, they often use aircraft that are similar to helicopters. Pilot Trudy flies an SA-2 Samson that can carry multiple people, avatars, and a good amount of cargo. One of the first times Jake is linked to his avatar, he gets aboard the aircraft with Trudy, Dr. Grace, and anthropologist Norm. They fly to one of the giant forests in Pandora, giving everyone an amazing aerial view of the lush terrain before they land. To film the scene, the crew used a special rig that was essentially a metal mesh box with seats for the actors to sit on. Crew members outside of the rig bounced it around to recreate the appearance of flight. There were also fans blowing on the actors to simulate the wind. To film some of the other scenes with people riding an aircraft, the crew used a traditional helicopter body modified for filming. It had no rotor blades and was lifted with the wire in front of a green screen to create the desired effect. Cut it down. We're gonna stay a, while. a lot of special effects were used to make the Avatar films, but that doesn't mean the actors were working in a total vacuum. The scene of Jake and the Navi climbing floating rocks required a unique combination of special and practical effects. While wearing cables for safety, Sam Worthington and Zoe Saldana had to climb a tall structure that was specially designed for the film. The weird scaffolding tower even got its own name. The biggest set pieces for the stunt department really have been this thing that we call the beanstalk. In the movie, the floating rocks are part of the Hallelujah Mountains. The majestic landscape was inspired by the Zhang Zhajie National Forest Park, located in China. There's one tall pillar in particular, the Southern Sky Column, that helped Cameron and his team design the Hallelujah Mountains. In developing the digital effects for the mountains, Cameron said that he'd figure out an explanation for why the mountains float, 
but never quite cracked a way to get it into the script. He said during a 2010 interview with NPR, Every time I tried to shoehorn it into the movie, I just found that it was an unnecessary explanation. People would accept that they had been transported to this amazing place where the rules were different, and it was okay for mountains to float. And it turned out that that technical explanation was completely unnecessary. <laughs> you should see your faces. While getting familiar with the ways of the Navi, Jake learns to ride a dire horse. As their name suggests, they vaguely resemble horses in both appearance and behavior, with powerful legs, long necks, and eyes on the sides of their heads. Unlike horses, though, they have six legs and are probably about the size of elephants. They live in herds in the wild, but the Navi have learned to bond with them and ride them, which is much faster than traveling on foot. To film the scenes of the Navi riding dire horses, Cameron went old school. He brought in real horses. Much like the actors, the horses had dots on their bodies to help with the motion sensor technology. On top of that, the horses had special attachments on their tails. All of this allowed visual effects artists to transform them into dire horses with CGI later on, which explains why the creatures move so naturally, despite their alien appearance. In Avatar, the Ekron, or Banshees, are large winged creatures similar to dragons or pterodactyls. Brave Navi warriors bond with Banshees so they can fly on them, allowing them to hunt from the air and travel great distances. During a dangerous rite of passage, Jake has to bond with one of these fierce creatures and learn to fly on it. It's definitely a challenge, but he's able to make it happen, going on an exhilarating flight with Neytiri and earning the respect of the Navi warriors. The moment when Jake and Neytiri take flight and soar through the mountains is arguably one of the best scenes in Avatar. In 2019, James Cameron told Yahoo that it's his favorite moment in the film, saying, We achieved our goals in terms of creating the ultimate alien rainforest and the beauty and all that. But I think the part that I still liked the best, and that I had to fight the hardest for, was the flying. When Neytiri first shows Jake the Banshees, Zoe Saldana approached two crewmen rigged together with a banshee head, and then physically leapt onto one of the guy's backs. For the actual flying scenes, she and Sam Worthington each rode on a plastic structure that was manipulated by crew members to simulate the motion of the banshees during flight. The entire flight path was mapped out using wire models that were flown around by hand while the actors simultaneously did their motions so that everything would sync up later. These people are supposed to be riding and directing the Banshee with the, with the power of their mind, so they needed to move together. The Navi have a very special relationship with nature, living harmoniously with the natural world rather than exploiting it. Since the Omotakaya clan lives in the forest, they hold trees in particularly high regard, and some trees are important spiritual destinations. The Tree of Souls is an enormous tree with long glowing leaves. The Navi revere the Tree of Souls because it allows them to connect closely with their deity Ewa, making it the most sacred place in all of Pandora. Jake and Aetiri also visit the Tree of Voices, a sacred site that looks similar to the Tree of Souls. They connect their tendrils to the tree to hear the voices of ancestors and pray. Although the sacred trees look gorgeous in the film, the sets where the scenes were filmed were much less enchanting. Saldania and Worthington really had to use their imaginations, admiring pieces of black string that would later be transformed into glowing leaves with CGI. To simulate connecting to the Tree of Voices with their tendrils, the actors each put a piece of frayed rope up to the strings. The Tree of Voices. The voices of our ancestors. Jake and Neytiri do much more than pray when they visit the Tree of Voices. Neytiri tells him that he can choose a mate, and he says that he chooses her. This woman must also choose me. She already has. They embrace and share a passionate kiss, then sleep together underneath the tree. It's a romantic moment, but filming the scene seemed much more awkward. Zoe Saldana and Sam Worthington both had to wear their motion capture suits, which don't exactly set the mood. The love scene is longer in the extended version. After Neytiri and Jake kiss, they kneel on the ground facing each other and entwine their braids to do the Navi nasty. This again involved holding frayed strings in the air to simulate the undulating braid feelers. The Navi aren't the only characters that need CGI. Colonel Miles Quaritch is the chief of security during Humankind's war against the Navi. He's the hot-headed main antagonist in the first film, but despite his military prowess, he wouldn't stand a chance against the nine-foot-tall Navi warriors if he tried going up against them with a mere gun. Instead, he uses a large mech suit. Even though Colonel Quaritch himself didn't need any CGI in the first movie, since he was a human, his mech suit was a different story that required both practical and special effects. During filming, actor Stephen Lang sat in a big mech suit that looked very similar to the one in the movie. Minus a few details, CG robotic arms, digital screens, and a large gun were added later to complete the look. By the end of the first movie, Jake has fully embraced Navi culture, so he decides to permanently transfer his consciousness into his avatar. 
To do this, a big ceremony is held at the Tree of Souls. Both Jake's human and avatar bodies are laid near the tree, while the Omatakaya sway in a spiritual dance. Jake passes through the eye of the deity Ewa, then he wakes up in his avatar, having now officially become one of them. Many actors had to learn choreography for this scene. A group of them sat cross-legged on the ground and swayed back and forth while wearing motion-tracking suits. Meanwhile, actor CCH Pounder performed a dance sequence while wearing a white outfit, with flowing fabric that would later be turned into Moat's ceremonial shawl. The Mechaina clan plays a huge role in Avatar The Way of Water. When humans return to Pandora, the vengeful Colonel Quaritch goes on a mission to kill Jake, causing Jake and his family to flee the forest to protect the Omatakaya clan. They travel a great distance until they arrive at the aquatic environment where the Metkayina tribe lives, seeking refuge with them. Since the Metkayina clan lives on the shores near the ocean and islands near the mainland, they have a special relationship with water. They spend much of their time swimming around the coral reefs, hunting for fish, and interacting with the local wildlife. While filming the scenes of this new clan, the actors all wore motion capture suits that looked slightly different. Each of the suits had its own unique colors and patterns to help differentiate the characters on set. Although many of the scenes were filmed with real water, some scenes, like the scene of the clan standing in shallow water at night, were entirely CGI. Once Jake and his family are accepted by the Metkayina clan, they have to adjust to a whole new way of life, which involves getting familiar with the ocean and the creatures in it. Some of the family members must learn to ride elus. Sort of an aquatic version of dire horses that can fly and easily travel through the water. Creating the scenes of Jake's family riding the elus required a ton of work. Instead of going with the standard method of dangling actors from wires, having them make swimming motions in the air, then editing the water in later, James Cameron chose to film the actors in real water. Richie Bainham, one of the visual effects supervisors for the film, told the New York Times in 2022, it's about the credibility of the actor's performance. If an actor is genuinely in water, there's a viscous resistance. It informs the actor's choices. That's what we're chasing. That's what makes it feel real. If we tried to do this any other way instead of being legit, it wouldn't be a James Cameron film. To make this happen, a giant tank was built, complete with windows so camera operators could capture high-quality footage from the outside. It was even able to simulate waves to create a more realistic effect. A layer of balls floated on the surface of the water to prevent light from ruining the shot while still allowing actors to come up for air. While underwater, the actors held onto contraptions that would later be replaced with the Elus. Neytiri killed Colonel Quaritch in Avatar, but at the beginning of Avatar The Way of Water, we learn that Quaritch's consciousness has been duplicated and put into an Avatar. Since he has all the memories of the original Quaritch, along with a bigger, stronger body, he's essentially a new and improved version of himself. Though he's still kind of a jerk. Shoot that animal! Quaritch's avatar looks similar to the Na'vi, with blue skin, large yellow eyes, and pointed ears. Unlike most of the Na'vi, though, he wears a lot of clothing. He's often seen wearing a tactical vest and pants with short black hair, a watch, and the same eagle tattoo on his left arm as he did when he was human. Because of all of this, Lang had to wear a motion capture suit while filming the sequel, which he didn't have to do for the first movie. He had black dots on his face to assist with tracking his facial movements. Ronal is the spiritual leader of the Metkayina clan. She has spirit sisters with one of the Tolkien's in the film, which are very large, intelligent, whale-like creatures that live in Pandora's oceans. Her Tolkien's name is Roa, and during one touching moment of the sequel, she and her herd return from migration. Ronal is ecstatic to see her and share memories about what they've been up to since they last saw each other. Tragically, not long after this heartwarming reunion, humans kill Roa as a way to get Jake out of hiding. They also extract her Amrita, a substance produced by Tolkien's that completely stops human aging. To make matters even worse, Roa's calf dies shortly afterwards. When Ronald finds Roa's corpse, she's devastated in a truly heart-wrenching scene. During filming, actor Kate Winslet had to wear a motion tracking suit and use her imagination to envision the deceased Tolkien. Yet, she still did an incredible job of conveying Ronald's grief. Kiri is the teenage daughter of the late Dr. Augustine. Her father hasn't been revealed, but she's the adopted daughter of Jake and Neytiri. She's a bit of an oddball who doesn't always fit in with the other Na'vi teens. But on the bright side, she has a strong connection to Ewa and the natural world. Thanks to technological innovation, Sigourney Weaver, who played Dr. Augustine in the original film, was able to portray Kiri in the sequel. She wore a motion capture suit and moved in a bouncy, playful way to portray the teenage character. Recalling a conversation she had with James Cameron, Weaver said, I remember Jim saying to me, you're really only 14 the way you act most of the time, so you can do this. Avatar's only go around. 